Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at layers in the Microsoft Visio program. So if you're not already using layers in your drawings, then it might be because you don't know where they are or how to use them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create and manage layers in your Microsoft Visio drawings. Let's say you're drawing an office with furniture. Oh, and overhead lighting. Well, wouldn't it be great if you could discuss the drawing with the electrician without all that furniture in the way? The uh, implications for layers are endless. Uh, org charts, flow charts, pretty much any kind of drawing that you can create can benefit from using layers. So, give me a few minutes and I'll show you how to incorporate the power of layers into your Microsoft Visio drawings. We'll begin the first part of our demonstration on layers by starting with a blank basic shapes drawing. And we'll first need to create the layers. And we can do that by moving to the Home tab and then all the way on the right to the Editing section or group and then selecting Layers. When we select layers, there are two commands. One of them is grayed out, and that is assign to layer. If we wanted to create our layers on the fly, we could just select an object and then create the layer and assign that object to the layer one or more at a time. But since we don't have any objects on our drawing surface that are selected, the command is grayed out. So we'll move to layer properties. When the Layer Properties dialog box appears, we can create a new layer by selecting New here in the bottom left corner of the box, and then naming our layer. And we'll call this layer our Red Layer. When we click OK, the properties for this layer are now available to us. And we can control whether the layer is visible or printable by selecting either uh, of the boxes. A layer can be active or locked, but it cannot be both. And if the layer is locked, then you cannot edit, move, or select any objects that are assigned to that layer. You can control the snap to grid and glue features for the layer. And if we like to create a color for the layer, we can do that by moving to the bottom right corner and selecting Layer Color. And since we named this layer red, we'll select the red color. We'll create a second layer while we're in this dialog box by once again selecting New and then naming the layer blue. And then clicking OK. And we'll leave all the properties where they are at the moment, but we'll change the color for our blue layer to blue by selecting the layer color and then selecting the blue color from here. Now we'll click OK. And next we'll need a couple of shapes to assign to those layers. And we'll start with something really simple, a couple of triangles. So now that we have a couple of triangles on the page, we can now start assigning these shapes to our layers. And to do that, we just have to select the shape or shapes, and then selecting layers from the editing group. And when we do, this time, because we do have a shape on our page and it's selected, we can now assign that shape to a layer. When the Layer dialog box appears, you'll see our two layers, and we can just select the layer that we'd like to assign this shape to. So we'll start with red. And as I mentioned earlier, if we did not have layers and we wanted to create a layer on the fly and then assign the object to it at all in one move, then we can do that by selecting New here on the right side of the Layer dialog box. If a shape is currently in a layer and then you group those shapes you can leave each shape on its layer even though it's in a group and you can do that by selecting the checkbox here in the bottom left corner preserve group member layers 
So we'll leave it at red and we'll click OK. And the shape becomes uh, white with a red outline. And we'll do the same with our second shape by selecting it and then moving up to layers and then assign to layer. This time we'll assign our second shape to the blue layer and then click OK. So at the moment, both shapes have been assigned to their individual layers and we can edit these shapes, size them, or even move them around or just select them. We could change all that by moving up to the editing group on the home tab once again and selecting layers and this time choosing layer properties. Now we can control the properties for the objects on these layers and the first one, one that we can control is the visibility and we can do that with our red layer by unchecking the box and then instead of clicking OK I'll click apply which is basically OK except it just leaves the dialog box open. So when I click apply the red triangle becomes invisible. Now you can also uh, create invisibility on a layer by changing the transparency color. So if I bring that visibility back and then click apply the shape is now visible but if I set the transparency almost to zero and then click apply the shape becomes more faded and if it's at a hundred percent me any uh, shapes on that layer will basically be invisible. We can lock a layer by moving up here to the lock command and in this case I'll choose the blue layer and lock it. I can then click OK on this and now while I can select the red shape or the shape on the red layer if I try to do anything with the shape on the blue layer I can't even select it. So I'll move back to the layers dialog box click layer properties and then turn the lock off. If there are layers in your layer properties box that are not assigned to any shapes and this can happen quite easily you can remove any layers that are not being used by selecting removed unreferenced layers only those layers that have no shapes assigned will then disappear making it easier to manage in this dialog box so i'll click ok it's also important to remember that when you're using shapes from the stencils, sometimes these shapes come in with their own layer assignments, as do other objects, for example, connectors. By selecting a connector and then connecting the two shapes, now if I move up to layer properties, we now have a third layer that we did not create. If the additional objects that you bring into the drawing are already assigned to layers, you can simply reassign them and then remove the non-existent layers. I could do that by canceling this box, selecting layers, and then assign to layer, and then changing that connector's assignment from connector to, for example, blue and then clicking OK. Now I can move back up to layers, down to layer properties, and then select the connector layer and remove it. When I do, I'll still get the warning, but since I've reassigned that connector to a different layer, it doesn't matter and I can click yes. And now I'm back to my original two layers. So as you use more objects you may need to reassign those objects to your uh, layers. So now let's take a look at a drawing that's a little less simple. In our office drawing, we have several different object types. We have the room frame with the beautiful blue carpeting. We have those lovely green matching desk and their complimentary red chairs. And then we also have overhead lighting as well as a credenza and a receptionist desk. To assign 
multiple objects to layers, I can simply select all of them. And you can use control click to do that. So in this case, I'll take the carpeting and the room frame and then move to layers and then assign to layer. Now, because I don't already have layers, I can create them, as I mentioned, on the fly and the dialog box for new layer pops up immediately when there are no layers in the drawing. So I'll name this layer frame and then click OK. And the layer is created on the fly and the objects that I have selected are already assigned to that layer. So I can just click OK. I can do the same thing with all of the desk and chairs just by selecting them once again using control click, making sure not to hit any of the other objects. And then move to layers and then assign those objects to the layers. And since I don't already have a layer to assign these objects to, I'll assign them on the fly once again by clicking new and furniture. Once again, the layer is created and all the objects that I have selected are now assigned to that layer. So after creating a few more new layers and a lot of control clicking, I can now turn on or off different parts of the drawing. So if I just want to see the electrical, I can make the electrical visible. In this case, I'll click apply and now I can only see the overhead lighting and wall plugs, or I can make the equipment that will be using that electrical visible. And then once again, clicking apply. And now I can see all of the computers and phones and their placement in this scheme. I can also make either the frame and or furniture available and click apply and now I have my full drawing available but I can turn on or off any of these properties at any time just by clicking the checkbox. And those my friends are layers. Now there's a similar feature that works by using multiple pages of your drawing but I'll cover that at another time and in another video. But in the meantime, I hope that you found this explanation of layers helpful and that you're able to incorporate them into your drawings. So until our next video, good luck with your drawing. And thanks for joining me. And I'm Wayne.